this episode of TQA Weekly, I explain to you what thermal paste is for and how it relates to the CPU and heatsink. <laughs> My name is Thea Smith, this is TQA Weekly, and if I ever have any questions, comments, suggestions, that or PC horror stories, you can always email me at ask at tqaweekly.com, interact with me in the community at tqaweekly.com, that's our website, and of course, if you're on YouTube, Vimeo, blip.tv, or anywhere else I post it every single week, you can always comment down below. Now, just a few pieces of news before I get into today's topic, I finally have my Google+, Plus. not that long number thingamajiggy, so it's plus Smith 1981 for those looking for me on Facebook, it's facebook.com slash Z-E-D-A-X-I-S-1981, that is the fan page. And of course, you can always follow me on Twitter at Z-E-D-A-X-I-S. Today's topic is all about thermal paste. And basically, it's about this. Things like this. Now, why? Well, first of all, I'm an overclocker. I'm a gamer. I am completely paranoid about the temperature of my computer. I have big fans with just enough RPM out of them to actually get the air flowing. I know about positive and negative pressure and how ridiculous it is to actually do that kind of stuff. But more specifically, I worry about the performance of my CPUs. Now, let's talk about why we should worry about CPUs and heat sinks. Well, whether it is Intel or it is AMD, none of them produce an absolutely perfect surface. Much like the wall where the insects can actually walk up on it or even walk on the ceiling, they are porous. There are valleys like there are mountains. And this is not a bad thing except for one detail. The same exists on heat sinks. Because of this, whenever both of these surfaces touch, they don't exactly touch completely. These are susceptible to damage by heat. They have to be able to readily transfer the heat out into the heat sink to allow for them to cool down. Failure to do so will actually significantly harm the processor and reduce the longevity of your computer. How do we fix that? Well, we fix that with thermal paste. Now, thermal paste is used to fill in all the nooks and crannies and bind both surfaces together with a thermal conductor. This one is Arctic MX2 thermal compound, and that allows for the efficient transfer of heat from the processor into the CPU's heatsink. And to do that, all you have to do is put on enough for a BB. So like Okay, exaggerated for video, by the way. You wouldn't put as much, but you need to be able to see this. And while this would be in the motherboard, because you have no choice, I'm doing it freehand here, just so you can understand, you would close together both of these and then press it. The clamp would do all the work, obviously. And once it is closed together, it would stick. Now, that binding action solidifies after 200 hours of functioning time on the computer. Basically the on and off, on and off. Most people seem to think that you can leave your computer around 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and there is no computer actually specifically designed to do that, except for NAS drives and for servers. Home computers cycle. That is why the thermal paste is created the way it does. It needs to cycle for it to bind completely. Next question would be, how often does this need to be changed? Let's try every two years. That's a pretty good tool. And most of the time, a lot of us would probably like to have the temperature of these things stay low. So every two years is how you should, is the time that you should actually take to change it. You can change it yourself or you can get it done at a computer store. If you wanted it to change it yourself, you would need to clean it. You can use isopro alcohol 97-99% with a few drops and use a lint-free cloth to actually remove the excess. If you don't have any, use a coffee filter. 
And on top of all else, if you are not sure about the job, you can always remove it, but keep in mind, it may introduce air bubbles that won't affect the normal user, but for overclockers will piss us off. And finally, when you do that kind of job, make sure you go into the BIOS or UEFI and check the temperatures. If the temperatures are nominal or normal, then you're fine, you did a good job. If they're really high, make sure that the CPU's heat sink is actually attached properly, or make sure that you put enough or not too much on it to make it actually work correctly. Too much will act as an insulator, not enough won't fill in the nooks and crannies that would be required for the thermal transfer to be efficient in itself. Now, obviously, I survive on your questions, your comments, suggestions, and our PC horror stories. So if you have any, shoot them at me at ask at tqwayweekly.com. You can interact with me in the community at tqwayweekly.com. That's the website. And of course, if you're on YouTube, Vimeo, Blit.tv, or anywhere else I post to every single week, you can always post your message down below. Have a great day. Don't forget to subscribe if you already haven't. And of course, share and like this episode with those that you think would benefit from this. Goodbye and toodaloo.